Look at how that just falls apart. You've got crispy bits, you've got soft bits. It's not too fatty. It's all pure lean meat. Look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that. You are going to want to watch on and get to this recipe and cook it for your mothering Sunday next weekend. Oh my God, it melts in your mouth. I'm not a big fan of shoulder because it's a lot fattier. The leg is way more leaner. I love the flavor. Lamb is really beautifully sweet at the moment and I can't wait to show you this recipe. It's foolproof, it's easy. It's a showpiece for a special occasion. And also I'm gonna make a potato dauphinoise and a mint sauce to go with it because those two are a match made in heaven with the roast leg of lamb. You'd be crazy not to watch this episode. Let's get stuck in. To cook the lamb, we're going to need a couple of pieces of foil to basically create a seal around the leg of lamb. Because it's a lean piece of meat, you wanna keep it as juicy and moist as possible. So we basically gotta create like a pillowcase with the foil. So, got my piece of lamb and we're gonna baste it liberally. Get right in there. With some olive oil, and then I've got some freshly washed um, rosemary from our garden. And sort of wedge it in there. Some thyme. a Couple of bay leaves. And then, of course, lamb, is not complete without garlic. Garlic and lamb go hand in hand and you can never use enough garlic. I think all recipes can never use too much garlic. So basically we're gonna wrap up this lamb with an absolute truckload of this garlic and then be liberal with your seasoning. Just rub it in there. Basically, we're going to make like a parcel with this leg of lamb. A good sprinkle of a freshly cracked pepper. I've got some salt pepper in there, so that's gonna give it a really good flavor. Now the fun part of wrapping this up. Really important to keep this completely sealed up. And that's why we're gonna use two pieces of foil. because that's gonna keep all those juices inside. Wonderful. And that was probably the hardest part of the cooking video. We're gonna put this into a roasting tray. You can use a rack, but I'm, it's absolutely fine just straight in the, rack, in the roasting tray like this. And if you notice, I got a couple of shallots and onions in there. I'm gonna slow cook them with these onions just so I can make like a gravy and jus later on. And I'm just gonna put a splash of water so it doesn't dry out too much. And that is ready to go in the oven. Now it's been preheated at 200 degrees and we're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes just to bring that internal temperature up quickly. And then we're gonna slow cook it for 170 degrees for three and a half to four hours, depending on the size of your meat. and it's going in a half turn. And you go. And that's why I love slow cooked roast dinners because I can now go and enjoy the rest of my day. I've got a long list of things to do. A few moments later. One thing I love with my roast lamb or any Sunday roast particularly is a potato or a carb. And this potato dish is one of my absolute favorites. It's a potato dauphinoise. So it's a French, sort of layered, thin layered potato cooked in this concoction of milk, nutmeg, garlic, cheese, cream. It's absolutely divine. I actually think the traditional version doesn't have cheese. So leave me a comment if it, if uh, I'm right or not, but I believe it, it has to have a good amount of Gruyere cheese. So I finally sliced my potatoes using a mandolin. Um, I've not done it too thick, not too thin, and I'm just soaking it in some cold water here just to remove any excess starch. 
and then I'm going to give it a rinse before I use it. Right, first let's make our milk mixture or cream mixture. Some recipes call for just using pure cream. I think that's a little bit too heavy and also tends, it can curdle because it will get too hot. Right, so in a small saucepan, we're going to add 400 millilitres of cream. I'm using double cream, but you can use single cream. And a touch of whole milk. A good amount of garlic, but like a crushed clove. I like to use two or three because I like everything with garlic. We're just going to put that on the stove and gently heat that and infuse that with the garlic, with the cream. You could also heat this up with maybe onion and bay, but for now, that'll be fine. Gently heat that. Whatever you do, don't keep your eye, always keep your eyes on that because that can spill over if it starts to boil. We're going to prepare the casserole dish. You can do this in a baking tin or um, a ceramic like this. We're just going to get a knob of butter and just grease it. Just going to add a little bit of seasoning to the cream mixture. So a touch of ground nutmeg or you can use freshly ground nutmeg if you've got them. A bit of salt and pepper. It's going to come up to gentle simmer. Next up, layer the potatoes. And it's important to layer them flat and slightly overlapping. I'm not just throwing them in. We're going to give it a little bit of care and attention. I love this dish. Absolutely adore it. It's not great for your health. It's not. It's got quite a few calories, but it tastes fantastic. And I think that's the main thing when you're making this for a special occasion for loved ones or a party. It's definitely good to have in your arsenal to make know how to make. So I'm just layering it slightly like, like a lasagna. I'm layering them in an anti-clockwise or clockwise action so that I don't put too many layers in one place and it's quite even if I was pressing it down. It's nice big bit stuck on the top. And I've just transferred the milk mixture into a jar so it's just easier to pour and I'm just carefully and really slowly pour it over the potato mixture so that it gets in between all those lovely layers for the gratin. Right just for a super luxurious dauphinoise you put a couple of flecks of butter over the top and then a little bit of pepper, a bit more seasoning over the top bit of nutmeg. Not traditional, but I like to include this, some picked thyme leaves. That's plenty of thyme. And then we're going to sprinkle a generous amount of gruyere. You don't have to, but this is a showstopper. This will give it a such lovely savoury flavour, which will complement that lovely lamb that we've got in the oven. So simple, who would have thought? Now let's get that in the oven and that's going to be for 160 degrees centigrade for about an hour and then I'm going to check it. You can always add in more to grate on top if you want. It's super cheesy and if you want it really 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 cheesy you could even put it in between the layers but I'm trying to be a bit health conscious and that is already going to be delicious. So that's going to go in the oven. So I'm putting this in the oven 160. I put a tray underneath just to catch any sort of spillages or overflow. We're going to go quickly check on our lamb now. So I'm just going to check on my lamb. It smells so good in here. Wow. There's loads and loads of juices in there. So I'm glad that I wrapped this up really well. I'm gonna get my knife. That is not quite falling apart. That leg of lamb definitely needs a lot longer. It's not falling apart. So that's going to go back in the oven for at least another hour and a half, maybe even two hours. Slow and steady wins the race here because this is all about cooking this really, really, really slowly and for a long period of time so that it sort of falls apart. Now I can see that these onions are 
well and truly soft and on the way. So I'm gonna take those out and keep them on the side for later for when I make the, the pan juice and the gravy. And then we're gonna put this lamb back in the oven with the potatoes and check on it in a minute. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love the combination of mint sauce with roast lamb. And I know it's very cheap or it's affordable to go buy a jar, but it's also super easy to make at home. So let me show you how. You need some freshly picked mint. And so I'm just removing the leaves from the stems here. And you need equal amounts of caster sugar, white sugar, white wine vinegar, this one is a little bit dark as I got some Chardonnay vinegar and water so 150 mils of each and then what I'm going to do is blanch the mint leaves in some boiling hot water then plunge it straight into this ice water here to stop the cooking process. Now with the stems I'm actually going to put it into a saucepan along with the sugar, vinegar and that water. So basically it's making like a quick pickle. I'm gonna put that on the heat now. And all I'm doing is just dissolving that sugar. So in a pan we added the vinegar, water and sugar and the stalks just to almost make create like a minty pickle liquor. And I'm bringing that to a heat until that sugar dissolves. Next up, so we're gonna blanch all of these mint leaves. And this is gonna take a split second just to take off that rawness and that's done. And we'll strain that. And that will go directly into our ice water. Stop that cooking process. Just a little bit of stir to help it cool down fast. Look how vibrant green that's gone. Right, that is cooled down completely. So I'm just gonna squeeze out as much liquid as possible. We're just gonna finely chop it. You can put this into a processor, but I find it just kind of goes a bit too mushy. And I like there to be bits of mint rather than just sort of a mint puree, so to speak. Look at that green. This already I know this is going to give 200% better flavor than anything that you get in a jar and probably be just a lot cheaper to make yourself as well. Right, I'm going to just run my knife through this a few times and then I'm going to put it into a jar or a container whatever you want to store your mint sauce in. I'm going to carefully scoop that into a clean sterile jar. Now with the pickle, so you've got the pickled, you've got the mint stems in there and I can see that the vinegar, the sugar and the water's all combined. So I'm just gonna pour it into this deli pot. I'm just gonna leave that on the side, let it cool down completely. Then I'm gonna pour it over our blanched mint and that'll be it done. Simple. So this is cooled down completely and I'm just going to cover all of that. Give it a little shake. I've got a little bit left over so I could probably make some more. And that is our mint sauce ready for the weekend. I'll give that a little stir before I serve it, but I can't wait to have that with the lamb. I'm going to get that straight into the fridge so it keeps fresh. Let's check on that lamb. Oh. Right, be very careful when you open this up. Ooh. Look at that. I'm gonna scoop out this garlic. Oh, that's gonna be like absolute heaven on earth. For all that garlic, I'm gonna just save aside for when I'm making the jus. I'm just gonna baste the meat now in some of its own juices. This smells absolutely fantastic. It's always good to keep the meat basted and well lubricated. I'm gonna discard this large piece of rosemary. 
And that's why it's really important that we use the bone-in meat because if it was boneless, then it would kind of dry out quite quickly. We're going to put this now back in the oven for what I call the crispy blasting at 200 degrees for only about half an hour at max. Just pop it back in, uncovered. Oh, and this dolphin was is oozing out. That's why it was so important having the tree underneath. This smells so cheesy and delicious. I know my kids are going to devour that. If they actually can get some, I know my kids are going to devour this, but they'll have to fight me because this is exactly everything that I want in my mouth right now. So I'm not sure how good your, my husband's photo camera skills are going to be, but I don't know if you can see how bloody gorgeous this lamb looks. Look how gorgeous that is. I'm not sure I guess loads of that fat into this tray. I'll just transfer the trays because I'm not gonna serve it in the roasting pan because it's super hot. And this way I can put all those roasted onions and shallots that we cooked earlier all around the lamb. Beautiful. And the roasted garlic that we had earlier so the roasted garlic, all the extra garlic that was with the lamb, I put it into a pan, give it a good old mashing. And then I've added some red wine and I'm bringing that to a boil. And then I've added loads of beef stock and I'm gonna add in the rest of the lamb sauces. And then I'm just gonna let that simmer down. And all these pan juices could go in the sauce or you could just directly serve it over the lamb as is. And that is your slow cooked leg of lamb with a healthy portion of potato dolphin noirs and some freshly brewed mint sauce, which this is gonna make me one very happy Sunday. Maybe make it for your mothering Sunday, which in the UK is next Sunday. All the details will be in the description below, all the rest as always. Have a look at some of our other videos. We do a couple of wild garlic recipes, which would be perfect for going with this roast lamb at the moment or check out the rest of our roast series any of those dish recipes will go perfectly with this roast lamb now i cannot wait to tuck in so i'll see you guys next week whoa that looks bloody delicious i think i'm gonna have to go to the gym now